Number 23, letter A. Calculate the rotational kinetic energy of Earth on its axis. All right. So first thing is, um, I have a picture here. The second part of the problem also involves the sun. So I have a picture here with the sun, um, with the, I should say, the Earth rotating around the sun. Obviously, this is not to scale. Okay, the sun is much, much larger than the Earth. But um, so uh, the first part of the problem says that the we have to find the rotational kinetic energy of Earth here when it rotates about its own axis. Okay, so we have to think about, well, in order to find rotational kinetic energy, right, what formula do we have to use? I already highlighted it over here on the right-hand side. So we have to use the uh, rotational kinetic energy formula. So let me write down for letter A. It's going to be the kinetic energy of rotation will, will equal uh, 1 half times the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity squared. Now, we have to think about in order to find kinetic energy of rotation, we got to know these two terms, right? The moment of inertia and the angular velocity. So to figure out what formula we need to use for the moment of inertia, we have to identify the nature of the object in question, the nature of the object's rotation and its shape, okay? So we're talking about Earth, which is a sphere, right? Rotating about its own axis down the middle. So the best picture on your in your textbook, page 359, is going to be this one right up here, all right? It's a solid sphere about any diameter. Here is the formula for the uh, moment of inertia, okay? That would approximate Earth rotating about its axis the best. Now, so that basically, so we have the formula here for I. So we'll plug that in in a second. The uh, next thing I have to ask myself is, what about this omega, right? What about the angular velocity? Well, it didn't tell me in the question, but do we know what the angular velocity is of the Earth? And we do actually, right? Just from, from knowing some some common ideas. Now, you know it too. You might just not realize it in this context. But if I were to ask you, how long does it take the Earth to revolve once around its own axis? You would say, oh, one day. Well, that's exactly correct, right? Or every 24 hours, right? They're both the same thing. So that is an angular velocity. Remember that angular velocity, actually, I have it over here. Angular velocity is simply a, an angular displacement per time. Okay, now in the proper context, this should be a rate that theta should be in radians and the time is in seconds. Although we can use instead of radians, it could be in terms of revolutions. All right, we can just convert it then. So we can say that the angular velocity of the Earth about its own axis is going to be it makes one revolution every 24 hours. So from here, now I can convert this into radians per second. So one revolution is two pi radians. That's a conversion we know by now. And then hours into seconds for every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Okay, so that cancels. I'm going to leave the value alone here. Just have 2 pi divided by 24 times 3,600. Okay, and that's then in radians per second. I'm going to leave it so we can get a nice exact value here in my equation. Now, you don't have to necessarily, you can calculate this and then plug it in. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to leave them uh, exact like that. So now what I'm going to do is basically expand on this, okay? I am then going to now write, so the kinetic energy of rotation will equal one half multiplied by the moment of inertia for this body, whoops, and it's going to then be times 2 mr squared, mass of the earth, times the radius of the earth squared, all over 5, right? Then multiplied by that value of the angular velocity, I realize that I can make a nice little cancellation here. The twos cancel. So my simplified formula now is the kinetic energy of rotation will be equal to mr squared, mr squared, omega squared, all over 5. Okay, that would be the simplified formula. So now all I have to do is just plug everything on in. So the kinetic energy of rotation will be the mass of the Earth, which is 5.9972 times 10 to the 24th. Those are values you'll, you have to look up. I doubt you'll have to memorize them. Uh, the radius is then 6.378 times 10 to the 6th, okay, in terms of meters. Then uh, times then the omega value, and we're going to plug in the 2 pi over 24 times 36 and that whole thing is squared, and then this result divided them by 5, okay? So, 
let's plug it all into the calculator. So we get 5.972 times 10 to the, and don't forget, whoops, I was just seeing if you guys were paying attention here. Don't forget that the R is squared. Okay, don't make that, careful, don't make that mistake. I was just testing you, of course. 5.972, so now let's calculate. 5.972 times 10 to the 24th times 6.378 times 10 to the 6th squared times then parenthesis 2 pi divided by another parenthesis 24 times 3600 squared and that whole thing then divided by 5. So here we get a value of 2.57. Okay, so 2.57 times 10 to the 29th. And that is in joules. Okay, now that takes care of letter A. Let's look at letter B. So what is the rotational kinetic energy of the Earth in its orbit around the Sun? All right, so now we have to identify the nature of this rotating mass, right, about its axis of rotation. So now in terms of the picture here, right over on the left-hand side, we have the Sun in the middle and the Earth. Now the Earth, I'm going to condense this thing on down to basically a point, okay? Say its mass is centered around this particular point right here. And if we then were to think about this point, right, traveling around the circle or around its orbit, it would basically cut out a shape very similar to that of a hoop, right? Its mass would kind of approximate a hoop that rotates about a center axis, right? The sun is right here in the middle. So that's the formula right here for moment of inertia I'm going to be using, okay? Now... Some keen observers might say, well, wait a minute, we also know the angular, not angular, annular, annular hoop formula, okay? And wouldn't this be better approximated by using an annular cylinder or an annular hoop? Um, the answer is technically yes, but in theory, well, technically yes. However, though, the calculations will basically be identical, all right? So this this one is just easier to to use. Uh, the reason why is if, if you look at that formula in your text for the annular cylinder, it's going to be m over 2 times the inner radius squared plus the outer radius squared, right? Now, this can be rewritten as this, m times r1 squared plus r2 squared all over 2. Remember, this is the inner and that's the outer, okay? So, the radius is the, so the inner radius is the distance from the axis of rotation, which in this problem is the sun, to the, you know, inner part of the cylinder that's going to be cut out, all right, by the, by the mass that's rotating around. So this distance right here in my picture, okay, would be what? Well, it would be basically this particular value, right, 1.50 times 10 to the 11th, which is the distance from the center of the sun to the center of the earth minus the radius of the Earth, right? Because this is the radius. So is that really very different? That value, when you take this number and subtract this number from it, is that number significantly different from just this value? And the answer is no, not really. Why? Because this value is almost a million times larger than this value, okay? It's like 100,000 times or close to a million times larger, somewhere in that vicinity. Right? I mean, you could take this, divide it by this, and get the exact answer. But it's, let's just say it's about a million times larger. Now, if you were to take, let's pretend you had a million dollars and I had to take one dollar away from you. Is it going to make a big difference? Well, maybe in terms of your ego, because you can't say now that you're a millionaire. However, though, it really won't change, you know, your, your financial position significantly. So it's the same kind of idea. Also realize that these are two values in the top divided by two. Hmm, that sounds like an average to me. So pretend that these two values are the same. Pretend that this is five plus five over two. What's the answer? Obviously it's five. So what's the average of two numbers that are the same? Well, it's itself, okay? So if these numbers are so very, very close together, so if you actually did the math out here and calculated the inner radius versus the outer radius, you'd realize that when you added them together and divided it by two, it's basically the same thing as this, okay? It's really not gonna be very different from that value. So that being the case, you can do this problem via the annular cylinder. Uh, however, 
as a simplification, I'm going to choose to do this with the hoop formula just because it's a little easier. Uh, but I hopefully, I proved to you with that discussion, I'm going to erase all this. Hopefully I proved to you with that discussion that it, the simplification should make sense. Um, if you want to be technical, you can do that. That's not a problem. But just for simplicity here, I'm going to use this as the moment of inertia. Okay. So now for part B, we have to find the kinetic energy of rotation when the Earth is rotating around the sun. All right. And that's going to be one half I omega squared. So similarly, right, we're not given the angular velocity, but we can think about it as similar to how we thought about the angular velocity of the Earth spinning around its own axis, right? The angular velocity of the Earth now spinning around the sun or rotating around the sun, and you're thinking about, well, what, how long does it take to make one revolution? Well, we know one revolution will take one year, aka 365 days, okay? I could have said 0.25, but nobody cares about leap year. Unless you're born on that day. Which then, do you have a birthday every four years? I don't know how that works. Anyway, um, so we have, and by the way, for all of you who might have that, I'm sure one of the viewers definitely has that. Actually, if you are a viewer and you do have your birthday on a uh, leap year, leave a comment below. All right. And um, all right. So now let's convert. We need not revolutions, but radians. And we don't need days. We need um, uh, seconds. Okay. So let's do one revolution on the bottom to cancel that out. Two pi on the top, radians. That's the conversion. Revolutions go bye-bye. And now we're going to have days on the top, hour on the bottom. One day is 24 hours. And then get from hour to seconds. One hour is 3,600 seconds. So we realize the hours cancel, the days cancel. We're left with radians per second. Not combining these, I'm just going to write now 2 pi divided by... Oops. 2 pi divided by... Uh, 365 times 24 times 3600, right? And that is in radians per second. And if you notice, these basically are the same similar values. The only difference is the existence of this 365 in the denominator, which will obviously make this value smaller by a factor of 365. So I know my omega, and I already talked about why, what uh, formula for the moment of inertia I'm going to use. So let's plug that stuff on in. So this is simply then mr squared. Now the m stands for the mass of the object that's rotating, and that still is the mass of the Earth. We do not take into account the mass of the Sun. Okay, we take into account the mass of the body that is rotating, that we want to calculate the uh, kinetic energy of rotation of. So that's squared, and then multiply that by our angular velocity squared. All right, now doing this on out, so it's going to be one half times, so the mass of the Earth is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th, then multiplied by the radius now, which is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th, and that's squared, then multiplied by my omega, which was 2 pi, all over 365 times 24 times 3600, and that's squared, and we'll get our value now. All right, so 0.5 times 5.972 times 10 to the 24th times 1.5 times 10 to the 11th squared times then parenthesis 2 pi divided by open parenthesis 365 times 24 times 3600 close parenthesis close and square it. And here we go. 2.67 times 10 to the 33rd. 33rd, and that is in terms of joules. All right. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next problem. Take care.